Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. It's me again. Today is Sunday, April 26th, and it's 1013. I want to share a message with you that came to Glory to God Ministries International. And they titled it, Look Through the Eyes of the Lord. I think you're going to really like this one. Not that you shouldn't like them all, but I... <laughs> anyway, I'll just continue. But those who receive are those who seek. And those who seek, they shall find. And those who look, they shall see. And those who hear, they will hear, and they will know that I am the Lord, and that my spirit rests upon those who adore me, and love me, and honor me, and rest in me. You're not fearful. You're resting in him. I mean, we have to still get up and do our business. We have life stuff to do, right? But even when you're busy, when you love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, you can still rest in Him. Take a little pause for the cause. A breather, if you will, every chance you get. Step off into a corridor of your workplace and say, oh, Hello, Jesus. I love you. I'm working as if I'm working for you. Okay, I got to get back to work. Talk to you later. But you can really talk to him in your mind the whole day. You know? If you can. Some people, you got to concentrate on what you're doing. I get that. So that's what I'm saying. Take a little breather. A little pause for the cause. And say a little prayer. That's praying constantly, you know. Where it says in the Bible to pray constantly for all the saints or however it's worded. Or to pray. I don't think constantly is the word, but it means the same thing. Okay, let me move on. Next paragraph. For I have become their life. I have become them. I have become all in all, in and through them. For I possess them by my spirit, saith the Lord. They think as I think. They speak as I speak. They hear as I hear. They act as I act. And they know the goodness of God has touched them and filled them to overflowing. Now, I want to take another pause right here and say, a lot of you might be thinking, oh my goodness, I must not have a spirit then if that's true. I don't always act like God would act. I don't always think like he would think. Well, we don't. And we won't always. As a rule, we should be. We're going to always have our fleshly moment when somebody pushes our button. Or we make a mistake and something flies out of our mouth that shouldn't. You just, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have said that. And it's done. You don't worry about it. We try to not do it again. But what I'm saying is, don't think that this means you, you, if you really love God, if he's really in you, you're perfect. Nobody's perfect, and God knows it. Okay. And their heart, and their mind, and their desires have changed, for I have rearranged everything in their life, and I have established my priorities in their heart, and in their mind, and they know that it is I, saith the Lord. 
who orders their steps and directs their paths. Okay, that's the end of the message. And then there's a, a verse here. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And that's in Isaiah 41, verse 10. I thought that was so perfect for someone I just emailed something to. And I pray that he sees this. And I may just email my video to him to make sure. <laughs> but anyway, we all need to know this. The Lord has rearranged everything in our life. When we love him, he makes things easier for us as a rule now this is not always because satan's going to try to interfere to keep you from loving god or to keep you from thinking you really are saved or that you're really on the right track you see what i mean satan is always going to be trying to battle what you're doing good so don't think that because you mess up now and then or you don't always think right you don't always think the perfect thing it's that's just part of the battle we're in for ephesians says our battle is not against flesh and blood it's not with people remember that always our battle is not with people it is against the powers and principalities in the high places and in the heavenlies. That means Satan and his minions, his fallen angels and all the demons. And demons will cause people, a lot of people are demonized. Probably all unsaved people are. And even Christians. And they don't even know it. And it's why they mess up a lot. And they need to just get deliverance. Which is why when people talk to me or email me about a problem they keep having. Or I may see it in comments. I tell them, go to Derek Prince deliverance videos. Self-deliverance videos. I used them. I listened to many of them back when I was told. Thank you, Chris. From Born for Battle, he directed me to Derek Prince, and I got delivered of my demons. See, and I had already started a YouTube channel, and God was already waking me up and giving me messages, even though I had demons to get rid of. I had to get on YouTube, start making videos, in order to have Chris tell me about Derek Prince. Otherwise, I would have never probably been delivered because I didn't get delivered from the other places I'd been to where there was deliverance going on I did it myself except for Jezebel I knew to get help because some demons are more um they, they know how to hold their ground better than others and it, t it takes fasting and prayer although with that one my daughter came and brought somebody with her who was a, she used the title prophetess. She was from one of those churches where oftentimes they'll, they'll lay their hands on someone and the Holy Spirit will speak to them and say, you are from now on a prophetess for the Lord, or you are an apostle for the Lord, or and so they take that title, and we'll see them on YouTube videos, Prophetess So-and-So, Apostle So-and-So. And we think, oh, they're so prideful to take that name, but you don't understand that they were brought up in the church that was so Holy Spirit filled, that kind of thing happened. All right, so don't, don't take offense at that. But listen to what they say. They may not always be what they ought to be or say what they ought to. All right, I'm going to end this with that. With this, I plead the blood of Jesus 
over um, this video, myself, my computer, and my Wi-Fi connection, and over each and every one of you, and all your devices, and your connections as well. And hopefully we'll stay together until we're out of here. And I think it's going to be pretty soon, y'all, because things are changing. And I don't believe things will ever go back to exactly the way they were. And I think that we just went through a live exercise. It was probably um, some things that they had created to start uh, something contagious that would go, you know, like the common cold. Do you know how contagious a cold is? And guess what causes it? The coronavirus. Okay? So they manipulated it a little bit in labs to make it more like the flu. Anyway, it was not as deadly as they were making it out to be. There was no need to shut down the economy. And there was no need for all the social distancing. But at the same time, it accomplished something. It was a practice run. It got us all thinking about germs and avoiding people and what have you. I just hope that our churches get reopened soon. Some people just don't know about YouTube or think it's all dumb stuff or people just spouting out their opinions and they don't realize that a lot of us are on here really trying to teach the truth. I know I am really trying and I may not always be right and I know that. I'm human. We all are humans. That's why our teacher has to be the Holy Spirit. Anybody who puts out a video that you question or wonder, you think, well, I read that and I didn't get that. You go back to that verse. You study it. You take it to the Lord. All right? Let him be your teacher. And by the way, let him be your best friend, will you? Because he really is. Jesus is our Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Being the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Jesus and God. Okay, you see how that works? They are all connected. So, if you say the Holy Spirit's my best friend or Jesus is my best friend, you're really saying the same thing. Anyway, they're always there to listen. And if you seek and press in, you will get an answer. Yes, you will. You have to want that relationship. This is why Jesus wants you to have a relationship with him. It's not about just following what he says in the word. It's not about just accepting him as your savior. He wants intimacy with you. He wants a relationship. And that word intimacy doesn't always mean what you think. It means you really, you long to get off work so you can have quiet time alone with him. You want your Bible study time and nobody to interrupt you because you want that time with the Lord. You see, when you're with, say, your spouse and you want to be intimate in that way, you don't want people interrupting and visiting and knocking on the bedroom door, do you? Well, it's kind of the same thing. You want that time. You should want time with Jesus with no interruptions. That time where it's you and him. You're praying. You're singing. You're worshiping. Praising him. That's what he wants. He wants an intimate relationship with you. Not where you're just throwing out prayers now and then and reading a, you know, a book, chapter of scripture and you feel like you've done your duty for the day and you get the difference, right? It's a real, true love relationship. 
it's agape love. Yeah, it's a agape. That's Greek for godly love. I'm going to make sure I'm right on that. Let me pull it up. Because there's different kinds of love. What is agape love? Here, definition. Okay. Agape, Greek, six words to change your life. The ancient Greek. Oh, come on. Don't give me a long article. I want a definition. Oh, here's the different kinds of love. Eros is the sexual passion. Philia, or deep friendship. Ludus, or playful love. Agape, or love for everyone. The most radical is agape, or selfless love. This was a love that you extended to all people, whether family members or distant strangers. Agape was later translated into Latin as caritas, which is the origin of the word charity. Okay, this is, a, this is like a secular site. Let's go back. It's not mentioning God. What does agape love really mean in the Bible? Okay, let's try that one. Agape is one... Oh, come on. Go away. I have to unclick. Okay, agape is one of several Greek words for love. When the word agape is used in the Bible, it refers to a pure, willful, sacrificial love that intentionally desires another highest good. Well, that's not very much more hopeful, helpful. Anyway, I'm going to end this here. It's, I'm dragging it out way too long. Y'all have a blessed day or blessed night whenever you see this. And I will talk to you later. Bye for now.